guys, um, as you can tell from the title, today I'm going to be reviewing for you guys, as you requested, the PCA Skin Pigment Bar. Ever since I told you that I have been using this and loving it over the past month, you asked for a review. So uh, that's what today's video is. I bought this PCA Pigment Bar myself with my own money. This video is not sponsored by PCA, nor am I an affiliate of PCA. And in today's video, I'm going to tell you as a dermatologist who I think this may be helpful for, who I don't think should use this. I will go over the ingredients in this as far as the what they do, the data for their use, and I will also tell you how I use it and how I think it's best used and, and how you should use it and show you how to use it. And uh, then summarize with, uh, again, why, why I think this is helpful. So if that is of interest to you, stick around. All right, so the PCA Pigment Bar is a bar soap uh, that is a vegetable oil bar soap. This product is not good for people who have rosacea, for people who have sensitive skin, um, and it is also not good for people who have a uh, allergy to fragrance. There is a, a fragrance in this product, and I'll get to that when I go over the ingredients. So if that is you, then steer clear of this product. Um, but who is this helpful for? This product has, as I will go into detail, many, many logical ingredients for targeting hyperpigmentation. Those, uh, so people who have melasma, people who have persistent dark spots, people who have acne that tends to heal with post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, this is a really good choice product for you to consider. This product is also useful for people who have hyperpigmentation on extra facial sites. Many of you verbalize that you've got dark elbows, that you have dark underarms, this is a good product to consider giving a, a whirl for those those in, those those problems. It is not it does not just have to be used on the face. So those folks uh, will find it useful. This product does not contain any ingredients that are contraindicated during pregnancy. So if you are pregnant, this is something that you may choose to consider during your pregnancy. Discuss with your treating healthcare provider, of course. But there are no ingredients in this which are contraindicated uh, during pregnancy or lactation. So make sure you talk about it with your healthcare provider first, but do know that. Um, so, you know, if you're somebody who has acne and it tends to heal with dark marks, this, this product is something that is good to consider. Also, the other demographic, the other uh, group of people, women in particular, who I think this is a helpful product for, are those of you out there who are dipping your toes into the no makeup zone, okay? And, you know, if you've got a lot of pre-existing hyperpigmentation, healing hyperpigmentation that you've been trying to cover up for months and months with heavy foundations and you're trying now to, to go makeup free, let's face it, the first month of that is 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 a living nightmare for you. You don't like the way that you look uh, with that hyperpigmentation. This kind of product can impart a transient brightening effect for reasons that I will get into in this video. And I think it will help you on that journey, which I always encourage, <laughs> in it, particularly in those first few months where you're getting accustomed to the no makeup look and you may have some some healing dark spots, hyperpigmentation that previously you were you were camouflaged with your makeup. I think you will find this this is helpful. But let's get into the ingredients in this product and what it is exactly that they do. First of all, as I mentioned in the intro of this video, this is a vegetable oil based uh, bar soap in a jar packaging. Active ingredient uh, number one is something called kojic acid. Kojic acid is a compound that is produced by Aspergillus oryza. Okay, that's a little fungus. And it uh, is actually a natural um, byproduct of the fermentation process for fermenting rice for sake. So I have always suspected that kojic acid is what is responsible for the touted um, brightening effect that people see with a lot of rice rice extract derived products. I've always suspected perhaps it could be kojic acid. And kojic acid inhibits the enzyme tyrosinase, which is critical for pigment production in the skin. It does this um, 
reversibly, so it's not permanent, and it does this by a specific mechanism. It chelates copper. Copper is essential for tyrosinase. So um, kojic acid uh, targets, chelates copper and inhibits tyrosinase and can impart, can help with hyperpigmentation. It has been well studied in particularly in Asian women with melasma and have shown improvement using kojic acid in um, leave-on forms, not in bar soaps like this, but in leave-on forms. Uh, they've shown improvements in leave-on forms of kojic acid uh, comparable to those of hydroquinone, all right? So, um, you know, I don't think I mentioned at the intro to this video, this product is free of hydroquinone for those of you spe specifically looking to avoid hydroquinone. So kojic acid, wonderful. This uh, product also has azelaic acid in it. I have an entire video that I encourage you to check out um, that goes over azelaic acid, all the things that it is wonderful for. Azelaic acid is something, it's a dicarboxylic acid that is naturally produced by um, a little yeast, pterosperum. And azelaic acid not only uh, has profound anti-inflammatory properties, but it also can inhibit that enzyme tyrosinase. And it reversibly inhibits tyrosinase. So again, not, not permanent. This is a transient effect. Um, it does so in a slightly different manner, in a different manner than kojic acid. Kojic acid, I told you, does the chelation of copper. This specifically, the azelaic acid inhibits tyrosinase by specifically inhibiting some of the um, amino acids in, in competing with some of the amino acids in the enzyme. Um, and so it does so by a different effect. So you're getting inhibition of the key enzyme for pigmentation by two different players that are targeting kind of kind of different things. All right. So you've got you've got two logical players here. Azelaic acid, because it is anti-inflammatory, is also wonderful and a brightening product because a lot of hyperpigmentation and melasma is is kept is kept going by chronic inflammation in the skin, whether that be from sun, whether that be from active acne. Speaking of acne, azelaic acid is wonderful for um, acne. It's not as great as like tretinoin or some of, some of the other active acne ingredients, but it's got good data for being helpful in acne. So again, coming back to those of you with acne, ladies out there who may be pregnant, Azelaic acid is is not is safe during pregnancy, so this is something to consider giving a whirl. Azelaic acid, wonderful ingredient. This product also has aloe in it. Aloe um, has <laughs> aloe is the aloe plant, of course. I've spoken about aloe in several videos before. Aloe has many many biologically active compounds, and within aloe, the aloe vera plant. Um, a grouping of compounds or something called aliosins. And aliosins have also been shown to competitively inhibit the enzyme uh, tyrosinase by specifically competing with um, something called DOPA. So again, you're getting a third mechanism of inhibiting tyrosinase, that enzyme that is, is key for pigment production in this product. And then fourthly, you have niacin, is fourthly a word? Dear. Fourth, you have niacinamide. I also have a video all about niacinamide, which I encourage you to, to check out, um, that goes into you know, the data behind niacinamide, what it is helpful for. But niacinamide is the biologically active form of vitamin B3. And it too can, the, niacinamide, excuse me, can reversibly inhibit, um, not, not the enzyme tyrosinase, but now it's going to work on a different part of, of pigmentation. What, what niacinamide works on is it reversibly inhibits the transfer of some of that pigment from the um, melanocyte, the cell that makes it, to the neighboring skin cells, the keratinocytes, all right? And so if you have a lot of surface hyperpigmentation, that, that is hyperpigmentation that has been taken up by, by the keratinocytes in your skin, the, the, the majority of your skin. And so this, this ingredient, niacinamide, is, is helpful for that. 
Niacinamide, also we have good data, niacinamide in a 5% leave-on lotion, um, again this study was done in Asian women, imparted a profound brightening effect um, after I believe it was something like 12 weeks. Not only was it shown to impart a brightening effect in um, melasma, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, but there is also some data for those of you out there with um, dark underarms that in axillary hyperpigmentation, ax axilla is the armpit, dark underarms that um, that niacinamide can be helpful for that. So we've got four very, very smart ingredients. And again, this product does not have any salicylic acid. It doesn't have, which I love, it doesn't have hydroquinone, which I have a whole video on talking about hydroquinone. So it is, it is safe during pregnancy. It doesn't have any, any retinol in it as well. So it doesn't have those ingredients, which um, can be contraindicated during pregnancy. My biggest problem with this product and why I do not recommend it for people with sensitive skin, rosacea, or pre-existing allergies, and why, and why it can still be problematic for anyone out there using it, is that this product contains rose, rosewood oil, I believe. And that is basically an essential oil that is fragrance. There's no data for including that that uh, essential oil in the product as far as imparting an anti-inflammatory effect, imparting any kind of acne control, melasma con improvement, hyperpigmentation. It's not soothing, it's not helpful for redness. You know, we just don't have data that does anything. It's basically in there as fragrance. Fragrance in skincare products can be problematic. Regardless of if you think you have a problem with it, it can still be problematic. A lot of fragrance molecules have compounds within them that are vasodilators. This can lead to redness in the skin, drive some of that inflammation, which you don't want when you're fighting hyperpigmentation. Inflammation is the enemy with hyperpigmentation. You don't want that. So that is, that is not a smart ingredient to put in this. Um, and I'm not sure why it's there. I suppose it is to make it more uh, pleasing to the consumer, but I wish that were not in there. And you know, it is my preference to eliminate fragrance as best as possible, but it does wind up in, in skincare products. Is it safer in a wash form than in a leave-on form? No. Um, you know, people who have fragrance allergies can't use scented uh, fragrance shampoos. They can't use fragrance face washes, but um, you know, potentially less risk of developing problems in a wash form. So I'm okay using it, but in those types, in those people that I mentioned before, steer clear of it, not for you. As far as how to use this product, I have to say, I was a little stymied by the packaging at first in that it's in this jar packaging. I was like, I don't know, a bar soap in a jar, um, but it is actually really, really smart. Um, okay, so this is what it looks like um, just here. It's just, you know, a dark brown bar soap. And the way that the product can be used is twice a day um, to lathered up to the affected areas. You can use it at nighttime um, and you can also use it in the morning. And the way that I use this is I use it both morning and nighttime. I just get my face wet first thing in the morning. I lather this up to largely my lower face, uh, you know, from kind of the, the cheek area downward. I don't really put it on my forehead just because I don't have a lot of hyperpigmentation there, but you know, you can put it all over your face uh, if, you, if you so choose. And then leave it on for two minutes. Um, that allows the active ingredients to kind of go in and do their thing and impart that brightening effect that you're looking for, as well as get you that, that control from the azelaic acid for some of the anti-inflammatory properties. Um, and, and then after the two minutes, you rinse it off. If it is the morning, you follow it up with a broad spectrum sunscreen. If it is the evening, you follow it up with a, a moisturizer of your choosing, ideally fragrance free, no nonsense. As far as actually lathering it up, um, that was the thing that, that kind of stymied me a little bit. It comes with this little scrubby device, which I actually don't encourage you to use at all, okay? Because that type of abrasive pad can really just irritate your skin, impair the skin barrier, and that is an enemy when you're fighting hyperpigmentation. So don't use the little the little scrubby pad in there that, um, you know, they, they want you to use that. Don't use that. Even if you have acne and a lot of comedones or um, you know 
plugged up pores, that kind of thing that you're attempting to scrub, don't use that thing. Really just use your fingers and you don't need a whole lot of the product actually. Um, I just wet my fingers and do like a few little circles and get get some slime on my, my finger and smear it onto my face gently. Um, and you know, you can get a nice thin film of the soap on there without having to use a ton. And I also love this because, you know, you don't have that slippery bar soap floating about in your bathroom. It is really, really smart packaging to have it this way. It's a little awkward to use, but once you get used to it, it's actually my preferred way to, to use something like this would be in a jar like that. It's just a lot easier than having to deal with that, that wet, slippery, slippery soap. You're only getting a little bit of moisture on the very top of the product and then you know you can just let that air dry very quickly and then close the lid. So it is, it's actually a really smart packaging, packaging way, way to package this. A lot of other um, over-the-counter uh, brightening soaps out there or just a bar soap so uh, you know free free form I like that you know personally I don't really like using bar soaps either on my body or my face they can be very very drying and so I was a little apprehensive going in that this was going to be super drying but honestly I find that it's comparable to a lot of the acne face washes that I've used and I haven't had any problems with excessive irritation or dryness using this and it's really been nice I haven't had any any issues with it and I've really been enjoying it. Personally, I do see a brightening effect with this. Um, I have seen patients who use this and love it and are very, very pleased with it. As far as the brightening effect that this, um, this, poor, this, this offers, do you know that it is transient, okay? This is not going to wipe away melasma, this is not going to wipe away post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, but it can definitely improve the appearance of it, and some of the other ingredients in there can begin to offer some long-term control to, to potentially um, help in, in making those problems worse, okay? So it's very, very good. Uh, critical that you use sunscreen when you're using any any product intended to to improve improve this critical that you just use sunscreen period like I feel as though you know I, I always need to say that but if you're pursuing pigmentary concerns and you are not using a broad spectrum sunscreen super religiously just stop everything that you're doing and learn how to do do the sunscreen it is the most important thing none of the other ingredients in, in brighteners hydroquinone, none of that stuff can work effectively and be helpful in the absence of sun protection. So make sure you are on board with that. But yeah, overall, I personally have been happy with this as a user of it. I will continue to use it. At first glance, the price is pretty off-putting. I think I paid at $40, $45 for this. However, I imagine this is going to last me maybe over a year or so, it goes a long way. You do not need much of a whole lot of this, um, as opposed to, you know, if this were in a pump, a liquid soap in a pump, I would burn through it. Now I'll, I'll get questions about using something like this in a wash form. Is it, is it still effective? Like, aren't you just rinsing the active ingredients on? Don't they need to sit on the skin? You know, all of the studies with these ingredients were in fact done with leave-on lotions, creams, ointments, not in tra transient washes. However, you know, do know that the mechanism of a lot of how a lot of these things work is is reversibly, it's transient, so it's not like you need to leave the product on there for sustained effect. Um, and I do see a brightening effect when I use this, again, not sustained, so I believe it works, particularly if you take the time to let it sit on there for the two minutes. Um, I've tried doing it in a rush and I didn't see quite as, quite the degree of brightening when I did that. Um, when I just put it on and, and rinsed it off quickly or, or left, it, left it on for a little while. So you do have the two minute wait time at least. Um, and I don't, I don't find that waiting longer really does a whole lot extra either. So that is how to use it. And again, I think this is great for people who are dipping their toes into the water of going makeup free as a potential um, to kind of brighten up some of that, that hyperpigmentation that you may have been previously hiding with makeup. Great for people with acne, um, a potential for 
pregnant and lactating women out there. Again, discuss with your treating healthcare provider. Wonderful for hyperpigmentation, both facial hyperpigmentation related to melasma or acne, as well as extra facial hyperpigmentation. Overall, very happy with this, and I will continue to use it up. You may, those of you who are familiar with my skincare routines, you may be asking and wondering, am I still using a salicylic acid face wash in the morning alongside this? And the answer is no. I, um, you know, just I ran out of my La Roche Posay one that I wasn't too keen on. My preferred salicylic acid face wash for acne control is the Zapzit one. Um, I ran out of La Roche Posay one. I do not intend to repurchase that because of the menthol in that. Um, but I, uh, since I've started using this and, you know, I'm using tretinoin every night, I haven't gone back to the, I haven't bought, I haven't repurchased a salicylic acid face wash and I've only been using this twice a day, uh, to my face. So this is giving me, you know, a little bit of extra acne control as well as acting as a brightener. Really, really been enjoying it and I think it's a good product. Um, and kind of worth it. Um, but comment below and if you've tried this or any of their other products. Speaking of their other products, I also have um, been dipping my toes into, I got this, this discoloration kit from PCA um, to try out some of their other products and I've been trying some of these. So I intend to review this guy for you all shortly, all right? So if you are interested, stay tuned for that video. This basically, this is 55 bucks for seven to 10 days, that's pretty pricey uh, for seven to 10 days. So in that video, I will go over each of these products and which ones I think are worth it and which ones I think you could skip. <laughs> uh, but anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. Talk to you guys tomorrow.